Thank you.
man. Robinson. Uh, Robinson. John J. Robinson. Why, why yes. Well, allow me to introduce myself. I am Reginald Marley. Marley? Th th then are you? Yes. I am Cynthia's uncle. Oh. Delighted. Deli delighted to meet you, sir. And are you? I must apologize for your reception. My brother devised that somewhat unusual doorbell to discourage unwelcome visitors. The bullets are only blanks, of course, but uh, quite effective. Yeah. As is the megaphone contrivance which carried my voice to you, don't you think? Oh, they're, they're both dandy, sir. You've come at a very tragic time, Mr. Robinson. Jack! What are you doing here? Hello, Cynthia. Surprise? I shall return presently. Well, it is a surprise. I wasn't expecting you. Didn't you get my letter? I wrote oh, to you. Oh, I got the letter, all right, saying you'd meet me in London next month. And then we'd come back here and ask your uncle's permission to marry. Yes, I know. Yes, well... No deal. I'm not going to wait a month. I came here to beard the lion in his den right now. I tried to phone you, but uh, you seem to have no phone. Uh, no, he hasn't. Oh, Jack, darling, it's, it's just that you've chosen rather an awkward time. There, there are things I've got to do. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're here now, and it's lovely to see you. Did you have trouble finding the house? Trouble? <laughs> no, I had a wonderful drive here. Uh, I did take one wrong turn, or rather the car did. It's at the bottom of a ravine now with all my luggage. Oh, how awful. Are you all right? Yeah, I guess so. Oh, you poor darling. You need a warm bath and some dry clothes to yes, put on. you'd be most welcome. Come along, I'll show you where to go. What have you got there? Huh? Oh, it's your front door knocker. Well, you won't need that upstairs. Let me put it here. Jack, how did your car come to be at the bottom of a ravine? Oh, that's easy. I pushed it. Why? I don't know. It seemed like the thing to do at the time. Oh, come off it, Jack. Hey, this is a wonderful old place. Well, I agree with the old part. Cynthia. Mm hmm Your uncle said I've come at a tragic time. What did he mean? He meant Cousin Crichton. Cousin Crichton? He's in here. Oh. I'm terribly sorry, Cynthia. When did he... Uh... Just last night. Last night? Was it a, a long illness? Sudden chill. He was very susceptible to chills. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, Jack. He was so sweet and so young. It was all so sudden. Yeah. If I'd only known, I would never have intruded. Oh, no, please. I'm glad you're here. Honestly, I am. This house is so gloomy and, and you're so... So normal. So what? Normal? Well, thanks, but... Oh, let's not talk about it anymore. This is your room, Jack. Oh, fine. I'll just... Oh. Oh, hello again. I've just been seeing to your room. I hope you'll be comfortable. I, uh, I hope so, too. I, I mean, I'm sure I will be. We have few modern conveniences, I'm afraid. No electric light, no telephones. Not even a television. Oh, well, let me be the first to congratulate you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> At least we can offer you quite a comfortable bed. Yes, well, you must be very tired, Jack, so I'll see you at breakfast, all right? Uh, yes. <laughs> and now, if you'll excuse me. Yes, well, I must go too, Jack. Bye-bye. Not so fast. Jack! You come in here. But we're not even married yet, Jack. You're telling me? <laughs> you Americans. Come, I'll show you where everything is. These are my cousin's things. I hope they'll fit you. Well, I'm sure they'll be fine. <laughs> Let's get one thing straight. Yes? Yeah? Once your uncle gives us his consent, we're returning to London, we're getting married immediately. None of this long engagement stuff. Is that understood? Yes, of course, darling, but you know, I mean... But what? Well, we mustn't rush into things. Rush? Who's rushing? I've known you over a month. 
We got to know each other pretty well during that time in London, didn't we? Well, we certainly did, but you know, it's a question of propriety, Jack. Tradition. My family's very odd that way. <laughs> they're dears, really, you know, but they're just a bit old-fashioned. What are you trying to say, Cynthia? Well, just that we mustn't seem too much in a hurry. We'll talk about it in the morning, all right? Good night, darling. Good night. Deeper. Oh, uh, Cynthia. Hmm? <laughs> Bye-bye. Good night. Terribly, terribly sorry. Heard you shout. Thought there might be trouble. Well, there's trouble, all right. Plenty of trouble. Well, my roommate here doesn't want to share the bed with me. Oh, yes. Percival. That thing has a name? That's my uncle. Your uncle? Your Percival is uh, not the spider. Oh, you mean that fellow that fixed the doorbell? Uh, my other things. He has an inquiring mind. Who are you? Don't you think we'd better do something about this first? Percival wouldn't like to lose that. No. Now then, where were we? Huh? Oh, I, I said, who are you? Oh, yes, of course, yes, I know the cue. Surely that's my line, old man, isn't it? Let's run over the script once more, shall we? Now then, uh, night, howling storm, hideous scream, interior bedroom. The door opens. Enter our hero. Well, that's me. The discover a stranger in his room. At which point, I say, who are you? I'm Jack Robinson, but... Oh, yes, you're Cynthia's young man. Well, I'm her cousin, Horn Wallace Marley. That's your first man. Well, uh... Hamlet? Uh, alas, for your... Serrano! Tis but a nose. Merchant of Venice, I demand my pound of flesh. <laughs> At the moment, I am between engagements. Uh, Cynthia neglected to tell me that she was putting you in here. Terribly sorry to have disturbed you. Oh, forget about that, but what about that tarantula? If I were of a suspicious nature, I'd think someone were trying to kill me. Kill you, Mr. Robertson? I think it's much more likely that someone's trying to kill me. What? Oh, yes. My room, you know. My bed. But who in this house would want to... Ah! Oh, indeed. Perhaps the same person who sent my dear brother to his last reward. But your brother died of a sudden chill. Didn't he? Did he, Mr. Robinson? Who left his window wide open all night when he was already in very delicate health, eh? Well, your cousin Cynthia. Oh, Cynthia's a darling girl. So innocent, so naive. She wouldn't think ill of anyone. I, on the other hand, am misanthropic by nature. One has to be, you know, in this house. What do you mean? You don't know us very well yet, do you? We Marleys, I mean. Well, no, I haven't met the family. Well, not all of them, not yet. My dear fellow. You haven't lived. Good night. Sleep well.
morning. Late again, Natalia? I had a wakeful night. <clears throat> so did I. Did you? Who are you, anyway? Is he one of us? A blood relation? Natalia, I was about to introduce our guest. Today, although a cherished member of our group has departed this veil of sorrow, we welcome among us a replacement, Mr. John Robinson. Mr. Robinson is a friend of our dear Cynthia. And while I am afraid he is an American, uh, nevertheless, I think you will find him very palatable. Mr. Robinson, I don't think you've met all of us yet. Allow me to present my other niece, Natalia. <laughs> it's cold, cold, isn't it? Cold hands, warm heart. That's what they say, isn't it? Do they, Mr. Robinson? <laughs> How wrong can they be? I believe uh, you've already met my nephew, Cornwallis, and this is my brother, Percival. <laughs> How do you do, Mr. Robinson? Um, How are you? Living? Yes. Uh, I'm sorry about that unhappy experience you had last night, but what a magnificent example of the genus Lycosa. The what? The tarantula, Mr. Robinson. Yes, I, I, I'm hoping for great things. Oh, what, do you, what do you mean? No, don't worry. He was only experimenting with the poison in the insect. Uh, sleep well, old man? No, not, uh, not very. Who could? There was evil about. I could feel it. I could smell it. Haddock, kippers, kidneys. Uh, thank you. Just uh, some coffee for me, please. Natalia drinks very little, except at night. Uh, excuse me. Uh, Cynthia, I think I'd better take the bull by the horns. Oh, no, not now. No time like the present. Please, darling, please wait. Not a chance. Uh, sir. Yes, Mr. Robinson? I'd like to have a word with you. By all means. It's about, uh, about Cynthia. Uh, well, uh... What I'm trying to say is my, my purpose for coming here... Yes, yes, yes. ...is I would like to marry your niece. I mean, I would like to marry your niece. I see. Well, well, well. This does give us all something to think about, doesn't it? My dear boy, let me say right away that I like the look of you. I like the uh, cut of your jib, as they say. I see no reason why you and Cynthia should not get married. Eventually. Eventually? Why, of course. I don't suppose you're going to marry her tomorrow. Well, as a, as a matter of fact, sir, I did. Impulsive, my dear boy. Rash. Sir, if two people love each other, why should they postpone getting married? I suppose that's known as American initiative. Very admirable, I have no doubt, but... Uh, but what, sir? Mr. Robinson, for one thing, this is a sorrowful time for all of us. This very afternoon, we are laying our poor dear Crichton to rest. I know, sir. I, I don't mean to be disrespectful. And for another thing, we know nothing about you. Nor you. About us. Yes, sir. I guess you have a point there. But that's easily fixed. I'm, I'm John J. Robinson, American citizen, 27 years of age. Uh, currently uh, an encyclopedia salesman working in the London area. I think I have about uh, $750 in the bank. Until last night, I was the sole owner of a Rover automobile. My health is good, my prospects are better. The most important requirement is that I, I love your niece very, very much. Well, that takes care of my side of it. Why don't you tell me about the Marleys? 
Very well, Mr. Robinson, I will. But first, I recommend you to make a hearty breakfast. <laughs> Here they are, Mr. Robinson, my ancestors, Cynthia's ancestors. Very death-like, don't you think? Oh, yes, sir. I think you should meet a few of them. My grandfather, Gideon, a great horseman, he bred these noble creatures, rode them, fed them, tended them when they were ailing, loved them devotedly. In return, he was trampled to death under their ungrateful hooves. My second cousin, Oliver, a scholar. Once when the rest of the family were in Italy, he locked himself in his study to write. The lock jammed. He was unable to get out. So he starved to death among his beloved books. It's terrible. My aunt, Iphigenia, a famous hostess, noted far and wide for the splendor of her cuisine. In one of her magnificent receptions, she served a mushroom sauce. Mushrooms turned out to be toadstools. So the poor lady died in agony, taking 20 of her guests with her. My uncle Mordecai, oh, but why go on? Thus it has been, thus it will always be. And that is why this house, my ancestral home, is known throughout the countryside as a house of horror. We are a blighted people, Mr. Robinson, a family accursed. When you become better acquainted with us, we may surprise you very much. But come, uh, let us return to the others. Oh, there you are, you two. We are ready to begin the obsequies. The what? Our brother Crichton, the last rites and all that. Oh, oh yes. Would you care to join us in a drink? Uh, I could use something, yes. Ah, good. Natalia, bring it in here, will you? I could do with a little drink myself. Something to get us through the day. We only have gin, I'm afraid. Some lemon and perhaps a little sugar. Uh, 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 no sugar for me, thanks. Cynthia? Uh, just lemon, please. I suppose you won't have anything, Natalia, as we haven't got your usual. Oh, what, what do you uh, generally drink, then? Bloody Mary's. Everyone to his own taste, eh? I have a sweet tooth to satisfy. There. Now then, does anyone know a good toast? No? Well, here's one I learned in Ireland. May you be in heaven one full day before the devil discovers your death. <laughs> That's right. It's cheerful. Bottoms up. Good. Now, shall we join the funeral cortege? Sad occasion. Very sad. Gin. That is, of course, if you like gin. Personally, I'm a teetotaler, but... Uh... Well, of course this isn't the gin, or otherwise we'd be dead. What else was in his glass? Lemon? Sugar? Sugar. Cornwallis was the only one who took sugar in his drink. Sugar? <laughs> Your intuition was right, Mr. Robinson. Sugar is enriched. Jack, where are you going? Out. Where? Should be obvious where to get the police. The nearest police station is 20 miles away. 20 miles? Just a few minutes. 
car. Oh, well, I'll borrow yours if I may. But darling, we don't have a car. Not even one? No. How do you manage? It's a bus. All right, I'll take a bus. All right. What time does it come by? 10.15. 10.15? On Thursday. Thursday? Yes, there's only one a week. All right, then I'll walk. 20 miles? Why not? Infantry training. Oh, darling, you can't just... Darling, listen to me. You agree we have to notify the police? Yes. And since you have no phone and no car and no bus until Thursday, there's no other way but feet. But, darling, you're not familiar with this part of the country and there's a fog outside. Fog or no fog, I'm going. Coming round. All right, my darling. Uh, Why? Well, you don't try to talk, my boy. Look, I. I don't want to seem too inquisitive, but. You're trying to say, where am I, aren't you? Wrong. I know exactly where I am. What I want to know is. What happened? My fault again, Mr. Robinson. A device I invented for stopping Muldoon getting out. Oh. What? Muldoon? Another of our surprises, Mr. Robinson. Perhaps a little later, when you're stronger, I'll introduce you. He is you. a creature of darkness, one who walks in the night. having a snack. Care to join me? No. No, 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 thank you, really. I, I couldn't eat anything. Loose gums. As you wish. Oh, what, what's that, uh, that funny little noise? That was Muldoon. Muldoon? Yes. Perhaps this is a good opportunity to introduce you. Oh, uh, uh, really, uh, I, I, I shouldn't disturb him. It's, uh, it's late. Uh, I, I can come back any time. Uh, next ah! summer. You, you sure he won't buy it? <laughs> yeah. uh, ha, ha, hi, Muldoon. You will be severely punished for this. <laughs> you know how I will punish you, don't you, Muldoon? <laughs> Get up! I will tend to you later. I'm most terribly sorry, Mr. Robinson. Are you all right? Oh, I... I think I'm going to have an awful sore throat. But all right. Why does he do that? Who is he? 
Muldoon is my brother. Once he was as sane as the rest of us. Oh, yeah? That happens in the best of families. Many years ago on safari, he was captured by headhunters. They held him prisoner for two terrible weeks before he was rescued. Ever since then, he has suffered the delusion that his head has been shrunk to the size of an apple. But why did he attack me? To his poor mind, everybody is a headhunter now. But that's, that's dangerous. He, he, he ought to be put away someplace where he could be cared for and treated. He has already escaped from three different asylums. Once, he even escaped from a straitjacket. A straitjacket? With his teeth. Every time he escapes, he comes back home to us. We all have a heavy cross to bear, Mr. Robinson. Muldoon is mine. I am the only one who can control him. How? With love, Mr. Robinson. I am a woman, you see. Really? I, I mean, of, of course you are. I've noticed that. Have you? I think it's time we went to bed. I don't know. I, I don't mean that. Don't you want to eat first? But it's, it's, it's the middle of the night. I, oh, it's, it's only eight o'clock. It was so dark. I maybe it's a good idea. Can you? Uh, you mean you can eat again after all that? I have to keep up my strength, Mr. Robinson. Follow me. Good night, Muldoon. <laughs> You look well in black, Mr. Robinson. Think so? It's my favorite color. Yes, I, uh, I imagine it would be. Poor Cornwallis. Strange how his clothes fit you so well, Mr. Robinson. Yes, it is. <clears throat> or is it a little tight around the neck? Uh. Some more wine, Jack? Yes, uh, please. And soon the flesh will have rotted off his bones. Uh, ex excuse me, I feel a little normal. I uh, think. An eccentric young man. Robinson, I didn't hear you come in. Oh, I, I, I didn't uh, want to disturb you. Nonsense, nonsense. Come over here. Uh, I'll pour you a nice glass. What? No, no, not, not for me. I don't wish to criticize my niece's cooking, but after one of those heavy meals, I do feel the need of uh, some aid to the digestion. Are you quite sure? You oh, no, no, no. I, I uh, enjoyed her cooking. <laughs> yes, you will. Well, 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 how very nice of you to visit me here. I don't often get a chance of showing off my inventions. Your, your, your inventions? Oh, why, yes. Here, in the solitude of my laboratory, far from the madding crowd, as they say, I work for the betterment of humanity, creating scientific wonders to ease their burdens. Now, that tarantula, for instance. I've been trying to find an antidote for its poison. Oh, have you? Well, that's uh, very commendable. That's my destiny, my mission. I don't work for fame or money, Mr. Robinson. While I live, the world will know nothing of my creations. But when I am no more, well, humanity will inherit them. And a golden age will dawn. You step over here and I will show you a scientific marvel. This, Mr. Robinson, is the result of ten years' work. 
first failure after failure and then just as I was about to give it all up success prepare to be amazed young man for you will see how I have harnessed the primal forces of the universe that's only yes only glass and wire yes yes I know young man but watch Behold, my incandescent lamp. It's not a candle, not a burner, not gas or oil, but a completely new source of illumination. A source akin to the lightning itself. I call it electricity. <laughs> Marvelous, is it not? Electricity. Yes. Dr. Marley. Yes, Mr. Robinson. I, uh... I hate to bring this up and, uh, and spoil everything for you, but it's impractical. Yes, you're quite right, it is impractical. Today. But someday, Mr. Robinson, some distant day, the whole country, the whole world, will be studied with great electrical power stations. And when that day comes, think of it. Streets, shops, homes, theaters, all aglow with electric light. You... you don't believe me. Um... Dr. Marley, I have to tell you... Yes, sir, I... I believe you. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Yes, that's another problem that I have to solve. It burns itself out in a few seconds. But I'm trying to find a stronger filament. Well, I'm sure you will, Dr. Marley. Yes. Now, uh, if you'll excuse me. <laughs> oh, but, but must you go? I, I'm afraid I have to. Oh, but I have so much more to show you. Yes, moving photographs. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Yes, and I have a method for preserving music and the human voice. Well, that's a catchy little number. Oh, it hasn't got a number. Oh, no, no, I composed it myself. It's... When the bats fly free Through the belfry And I hear quick steps Soft and stealthy Through a clammy fog So unhealthy I feel the horror of it all Had a doctor mad, I mean ingenious with his fresh made lad, Frankensteinious vampires eating lunch, intravenous, I feel the horror of it all. When the spiders crawl, swift and hairy through the shadows tall, dark and scary, just one bite and oh, Obituary, I feel the horror of it all. Still, it's been said, the best things in life are dead. I hear even monsters have their charm. So what the heck, just a nip in the neck, and I'm back in my mummy's arms. No, there's just one thing. That can chill me nights without your sweet Kiss to thrill me life without your love That could kill me, that would be the horror of it all That would be the real horror That would be the blank terror That would be the stark raving horror Mr. Mr. Robinson, do you know what I think would improve this machine? Oh, I haven't the vaguest idea, sir. Well, just a little more bass. <laughs>
Well, it is a little tinny, yes. Uh, thank you, Doctor, for showing me around. I uh, will drop back by when you invent the horseless carriage. <laughs> horseless carriage? Oh, how silly. <laughs> horseless carriage. What an idiotic. Uh, yeah. What an intriguing notion. Poor Uncle Percy. He's actually a good inventor, you know. It's just that he's 50 years behind. Yeah. Darling, we're, uh, we're going to have to get serious now. We know that somewhere in this house there's a murderer. I know, Jack. It's so hard to believe. I know they're different. I know, darling, but we, we've got to face facts. And what we have to do is come up with a motive. I don't think it would be this house. Not after what Percival's done to it. What about money? Is there any money in the family? Oh, no, not anymore. Not with all the taxes and everything. I doubt if there's much more than 300,000 pounds left. 300,000 pounds? That's almost a million dollars. Is it? Why didn't you tell me this before? I don't know, darling. I didn't think it was important. Not important? You've just come up with the motive, that's all. Now, obviously, there's some kind of a will or something, a, a legacy. Somebody in this family is trying to grab off the entire estate. That's it. Now, 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 who, who, who would benefit the most? Well, I suppose the best person to answer that one is Grandpa. You mean there's another Marley on the premises? Just one more. He's the dearest one of all. <laughs> you haven't met him yet because he's bedridden. Oh, I see. Well, honey, I'm going to have to talk to him. Well, shouting's going to be more like it. What's that? Oh, Jack, I'm so frightened. Now, well, welcome to the club. Oh, please don't go out there, Jack. Darling, I've got to. Now, you just stay here right where you are. I'll be right back. <coughs> Dr. Marley! Uncle Percy, don't tell me they've tried to kill you, too. It's quite hopeless, Mr. Robinson. Ho hopeless? What? What's, what's hopeless? A locomotion by means of an electrically ignited fuel. No, it's much too dangerous. No, you can take it from me, young fellow. We shall never replace the horse. No. <coughs> Good night. <coughs> <laughs> Darling, I hope I'm not around when he invents the atom bomb. I hope so, too. <laughs> now, look, look, I've got to go talk to your grandfather. You think you can persuade him to see me? Yes, I think so. <laughs> Why didn't you knock? I didn't think you'd hear. Well, of course not. You know I don't drink beer. Grandpa, I want you to meet my fiancé. She what? I want you to meet the man I'm going to marry. Eh? Marry. Oh, no. No, I, I don't know anyone I like well enough. <laughs> the man I'm going to marry. Oh, oh my goodness, you... You gave me a start. I mustn't do that. Ah, sure. You, you, you want to get married? When? What's his name? Uh, Jack Robinson. Oh, no. Not as soon as that, young man. Not until I know you a little better. Do you love him, child? In that case, you have my blessing. Well, you'll have to give me a few particulars, young man. Where are you from? America. 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 <laughs> oh, you, you mustn't upset me like this. America, eh? I was there once. Still got a scar where an arrow hit me. You see? Grandpa, Mr. Robinson wants to talk to you. About what? About the money, sir. Uh, your estate. I'm not in estate. At least uh, I wasn't until you came in. No, no, the money. The will. The money. Money? That's uh, wretched. You're just a fortune hunter. Uh, I might have guessed it. Out you go, sir. But Grandpa. Grandpa, indeed. Confound your presumption. You better go, darling. We mustn't upset him. Uh, nice to have met you. Uh, of course you've upset me. Off you go, sir. Don't be upset, Grandpa. There's nothing to worry about. Don't forget your medicine.
make a mess out of that, didn't they? Oh, no, you didn't. In any case, we couldn't tell him that there's a killer in the family. No, I suppose not. You can't come in. What kind of a man do you think I am? I know what kind of a man you are. See you in the morning. Dear sir, accept my apologies. The information you want is hidden in Mordecai's museum located in the conservatory just off the hall. Proceed with utmost caution. Grandfather Marley. A will. Mordecai's museum. replica of Miss Gloria Van Wicket, star of the stage production of the Mad Marquis at the Grand Guignol, Paris, 1907. How low can you go?
ten a leaf was a substance used by the ancient Egyptians in the process of embalming. Embalming? Why, of course, Mordecai's museum. Duck. Oh, this is terrible. I knew we should have that dreadful room dismantled. <laughs> Medicine. Where is it? Well, let's get out of here. Yes, gladly, but uh, what were you doing here in the first place? Well, I got this note from... Well, what is it? Grandpa. He lured me here. Grandpa? But what on earth? Tried to kill me in that room. It was Grandpa all along. Are you... What are you saying? Yeah, the old buzzard had me fooled. I'm on to him now. He's the one. Come on. Yes, but my boy, I... Rush him. You're making sure. and rare, just as you like it. Ah, Muldoon, stop it. Muldoon, I'm warning you, if you don't let me go, there'll be no dessert for you. Ah, it's your favorite, blood pudding. It's a very interesting theory, Mr. Robinson, which you must forgive me if I find it uh, unbelievable. Unbelievable? You can't deny that someone's been bumped uh, doing away with the members of this family. Oh, that is true. Uncle Reginald, how can you take it so calmly? You act as if this murderer were just... Dennis the Menace. Yes. My dear child, we shall gain nothing by becoming excited. Well, I'm plenty excited. I think I have a right to be. After all, the killer tried to knock me off, too. So it uh, appears. What do you mean, appears? My dear Mr. Robinson, has it never occurred to you that a truly clever murderer would probably try to make it seem as though there'd been attempts on his own life. What? You think I'm the killer? Well, I would rather suspect you than my own flesh and blood. Uncle Reginald! Blood is thicker than water, Mr. Robinson. But why? What motive would I have? Motive? You've already suggested it. Filthy lucre. Money. The root of all evil. But I'm not in line for it. Oh, I see. You think maybe I'm bumping everybody off so that Cynthia gets all the money. Then when I marry her... Now, isn't that interesting? That it was not I who suggested that, but you. Now, you listen to me. Some blood pudding, Mr. Robinson? No, thanks. Midnight. 
the magic hour. Poor Cornwallis. Do you remember how he used to recite? It is now the very witching hour of night when graveyards yawn and hell breathes out contagions to this world. Now could I drink hot blood and do such bitter business as the day would quake to look on. I still say this is a peculiar time for a party. And a peculiar party it is, too. Halloween comes but once a year. Yeah. Where's Cynthia? Cynthia. Of course. Where is the girl? I shouldn't worry, Mr. Robinson. Shouldn't worry? With a killer in the house? Cynthia? 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 Oh, excuse me, have you... wanted to scare him. That gun's supposed to have blanks. Somebody put real bullets in it. Who? I don't 
don't know. I don't know. Let's go. Where? To the police. But Jack is 20 miles. Do you want to stay here and be killed? Oh, uh, Mr. Robinson. Huh? What? Do you think I could just have a word with you? Dr. Marley, some other time. Well, it won't take a moment. I'm sorry, but it'll have to wait. But I've just completed a brand new invention. Oh, that's fine. Yes, yes. I knew you'd be pleased. Oh, yes. Because, I mean, you seem so intrigued with my work. Dr. Marley, not now. Oh, oh, you're busy. Yes, yes, I see. Well, that's quite all right, of course. Would you let me know when you have a free moment? Sure. Excellent. Since it was your idea in the first place, what, I what, simply... My idea? Yes, of course it was. What are you talking about? Well, after a great many failures, I've actually done it. Done what? The horseless carriage. I've invented it. You've invented... You've invented it? Yes. Isn't that nice? Uh, Dr. Marley, uh, listen. I'm listening. Uh, don't get excited. No, I'm not excited. Uh, just think clearly. And... Yes. And tell me something. All right. When you say you've invented a, a horseless carriage, you really mean you've invented a kind of little model. That's it, isn't it? A model? A model. I'm afraid I really don't know what you mean. Is it larger than a, a, a bread box? Oh, considerably. Where is it? Well, it's over here. But you can't see it. Uncle Percy, I'd love to see it. Just let me get my wrap. Well, there it is. Yep, here it is. <laughs> Does it uh, work? Why, of course it works. Uh, uh, let, 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 let's try it, may we? Yes, of course. Come, Come along, you. my dear. Please. It's quite safe. Oh, I'm sure it's safe. <laughs> Uncle Percy, you're years ahead of your time. Yes, What is I this know. Uh, strange uh, box? Oh, that's been in our family a great many years. It's a hearse. A hearse? A hearse? Yes, yes. How do you... Oh, uh... yes, of course. I must show you. Now, that little switch ignites the fuel. That's why I call it the ignition. How oh, sweet. That reminds me. I must fill the tank. What do you use for fuel? Well, it's... Uh... Oh, of course. Jen. Of course. <laughs> I never touch the stuff myself, you know. But after all, it has its uses. It's just right for this. There we are. Now, if you're ready, turn on your ignition. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's your steering mechanism. Yes, I see. And the button on the top is the warning device. Uh, Just test it. Face uh, Hoven, you know. Yes, I see. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Where's the brakes? Yes. Brakes. Oh, I knew there was something I'd overlooked. My favorite tune. You play it so beautifully, my dear. Ah, it brings back my youth. Well, they've gone. Gone. Uh, yes, for the police. Well, then, we shall soon learn the identity of the murderer. Well, I certainly hope so. Do you, Percival? Yes, Uncle Percy. Do you really hope so? Well, what are you suggesting? Do you think that I... Why not? But that's preposterous. Is it? Is it so preposterous? Yes, of course it is. It might just as well be you. Me? Yes. Or even you. How dare you? No, no, I didn't do it. I'm not the murderer. No. Now what? Uh, I hope this crazy buggy isn't some kind of a booby trap. You know, I'm still not sure Percy isn't the murderer. He isn't the murderer. Well, that's easy enough to say, but... Honey, uh... Is that a gun? I'm afraid so, my darling. At first, I didn't want to kill you. Kill me? What are you talking about? I just wanted to get the money and marry you and go away someplace, but you spoiled everything by coming here, finding things out. <laughs> Cynthia, this isn't the time for a joke. It's not a joke, Jack. 
Why did you have to come? Why couldn't you have waited? It all could have worked out so well. Cynthia. You? Yes. Crichton? Cornwallis? Grandpa? You killed him? Yes. And that, that, that metal room? You did that? Tarantula, too. It was meant for Cornwallis, but you moved into the room so unexpectedly there wasn't time to remove it. Uh, Muldoon, you let him out just now so that he could chase me? Of course. And then the bullet that killed him, you, you put that in there? Yes. No. No, I can't believe it. Darling, I can't believe it. Well, you're in danger, too. The, the Iron Maiden. I did all that to avert suspicion. But Muldoon, he, he almost killed you, too. No, he wouldn't have. Only men were headhunters to him. Please understand, Jack. A million dollars is a lot of money. Oh, well, of course it is. I, I'm sorry I complicated things for you. But I'm still very fond of you. You must believe that. Oh, I do. I do. I, I, I'm glad we're such good friends. I'll prove it to you. Uh, Cynthia, please, don't do me any favors. Jack, I will. I'll make your death as quick and as painless as I can. Now, please stop the car. Yeah, so you can shoot me quick and painless. Please stop this car. Cynthia, will you listen to me, please? Honey, you're insane. Uh, suppose you kill me, then what? Then I go home and get rid of the rest of them. Now, Percival and Reginald, that you kill them and that sweet Natalia? Yes, please be sensible and stop this car. Give me that gun. Give me that gun. Jack! Oh, Jack, please let me go. How is he, Doctor? Is he still unconscious? I'm afraid I don't really know. He has his own doctor, you know. But he hasn't got a doctor. I mean, he's American. He's only just arrived. Oh, good. This man needs a doctor. Jack, here, what is it you're doing? I've come to tell you. The real killer is... I know who the real killer is, honey. Get up here, you. Mr. Cornwallis Marley, in his most convincing performance. Did you know about this all along? Oh, only when he put me in the Iron Maiden. I wanted to tell you honestly I did, darling, but Muldoon was chasing us. You're a wonderful girl, darling, but a terrible liar. I know, darling, but I didn't want you to be in danger, and I had to go back to warn the others. So you made up all that stuff about you being the killer, and then you hit me in the head. Was it very painful? Well, I'll live. What about the gun? Oh, blank bullets. One of Uncle Mordecai's stage props. Why are you in the mood for questions? Tell me what gave me away. That fancy ring you wear. Remember, I was the man that checked your pulse when you, uh, you died. Oh, stupid of me. A flawed performance. <laughs> when I died, oh yes. I'm really quite proud of that. There wasn't exactly any poison in that sugar, you know. But it did contain a very powerful drug that slowed down the action of my heart and turned me into a very reasonable facsimile of a corpse. <laughs> Getting out of the crypt was no problem. Come along, you. Uh, oh, au revoir, Cynthia, my dear. Uncle Cornwall, I don't suppose I'll ever see you again. Oh, I don't know. What are the words of that old hymn? The vilest sinner may return. Don't know. Poor Uncle Cornwallis. Poor Cornwallis? Oh, Jack, after all that, I shouldn't think you'd want to marry into a family like mine. Oh, oh no, you don't. You're not getting rid of me that easily. We'll be man and wife before you can say Jack Robinson. <laughs> See what I mean? Ha, <laughs> ha,
while a sinner may return. Thank you.